Phala and Prayojana we talked about yesterday, right? Now we come to the first verse. If you have your handouts, are there any newcomers here? If you need a, if you need, it looks like no, there are no newcomers. Okay, you have some extras. Okay. So we're, look, we're going to look at the first verse. Karmanye vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phalahe turbhuhu ma te sangostva karmani. This is the first verse. This verse has four sentences in it. Okay. So there are four quartets, and so each one is a sentence. Karmanye vadhikaraste. So, you have access only to the karma, which is true, right? Karma is always in the present. Karma means the action that you perform is in the present. And you have access to it. You have complete access to it. Right? If you think about it, the present is the only thing that you have access to. Right? The present moment. Right? The past is already gone. And it is there only in your memory. And that memory is not perfect. Does everybody agree, right? Is, is memory is what? And if, if an event uh, takes place, and we are all witness to this event, and w as we leave, somebody were to interview us, we'll all have different experiences to, to describe. When you describe it, it'll be described differently by each of us. Our experiences would be entirely different, right? So memory is faulty. So and so we cannot really access that uh, that event in its entirety in its in, in its there is no reality to it if it was if it, if it were real then everybody would see it exactly that same way it is not real we are projecting it so we're seeing it the way that we want okay so so that's what krishna is saying krishna is uh, putting our focus on to what is real the real is only in the present moment okay so present that's where the action is. So we need to focus on that. But what we tend to do is to focus on the result, the future. Now like, let's examine the future. Does the future exist? Only in your examination, uh, only in your imagination, right? You imagine a future. By that, you're projecting the future. So I was watching, uh, you know, I like to watch uh, some Netflix at night because I cannot study anymore. I've been studying all day. And I cannot get any more information into this head anymore. So then uh, I watch a little Netflix. Then I get bored. Then I watch uh, a lecture by my uh, teacher. But I won't listen to any Vedanta at that time. Because if I listen to real Vedanta, then I have to uh, exercise my <laughs> brain. And brain is almost ready to go to sleep, right? So I watch uh, Netflix. and it, But it has to be something that doesn't disturb my mind. I protect my mind. If I watch some violence or some very emotional thing, then the next day my meditation is ruined. So I never watch something like that. I watch things that are comedy. It has to be comedy. And it has to be really simple comedy. It shouldn't, shouldn't be like hurting somebody, you know. It shouldn't be like that. It should be really simple, silly almost. I, you know, maybe sometimes I even watch teenagers' shows, you know, because those are like, there's, there'll be some moral or the other at the end. I like that. And it is light. It's not very, it doesn't make you go up and down, right? Your mind is protected. So I was watching the show Cheers. <laughs> it's the silliest show <laughs> in the world. But you, can, you just have a good laugh. You don't have to exercise your intellect. You just watch it and just go to sleep. It doesn't stay at all. But then I was also noticing certain things. In those days, there were no cell phones, no laptops, you know, no, um, none of these iPads or anything. They would use this phone, the rotary phone, and uh, make the thing. And, and, you know, they didn't feel like they were, it doesn't seem like they were missing anything. They didn't miss it. We didn't miss any of this those days, right? Think about it. Can you imagine? Such a day today, like you have a rotary phone in your house, okay? No cell phones, no computer, no laptop. Can you imagine such a such a situation today? It's not possible, right? Totally dependent on all these devices, 
We cannot get in the car without your GPS. It's not possible. We can't even imagine as, oh my God, I don't have my GPS today. Right? It is <laughs> terrifying. Suppose, you know, isn't it? And yet you, you watch the show from, uh, from those days and I was like, I never missed it. I just had a map, a uh, paper, you know, folded up map in my car and I would pull it out and look at it. I knew exactly where to go. Problem solved. And I did not miss this. <laughs> and I couldn't have imagined in my mind that someday that I'm, I'm going, going to be using this device which will tell me exactly where to make a left turn, exactly where to make, I never could have imagined that. Okay, now this is, this is what we're talking about. So today, there are many things that we don't miss. We're going to get attached to in the future, right? There's no way of knowing what that is. Can you know? Can you imagine? You can imagine, maybe. But, but can you know exactly what is going to happen? Not at all. This is what I mean when I say the future is not there. It does not exist. What we are doing is we are just imagining and projecting a future and that is not going to be how the future is going to be. When it unfolds as the present, it's going to be entirely different, <laughs> right? From what you imagined it to be. So why are we even bothering to think about the future? That's what, I'm, that's what my question is. Shouldn't we think about it? It's worth examining, isn't it? Isn't it worth examining? So when you perform an action, the result of that action is in the future, which doesn't exist. So why bother? Yes, you, you have, you, I mean, you, you, there is, what I'm trying to say is, okay, when you perform an action, of course, this is the result that I, I want. Without, <laughs> without a result, even an idiot will not work, right? Will, will not perform an action. That is there, of course. You have, you have to set an, set an intention. So this is the action I'm performing, and this is the result I'm expecting. That's it. You, let's leave it at that. But don't focus on it, because what is going to come, we can never guess. We can never, ever, ever guess. So we let it go. So once we have set the goal, okay, this is my goal, okay, and this is the action I have to perform to get that goal, get to that goal. That much we set. And then we completely forget about the goal and focus on the action, which is where you have access. This is what you have access to. So that is the um, advice given by Sri Krishna. Karmanevadhi karaste for you, for Arjuna, you only have a right to the action, an access. You can access the action. Okay? The second sentence is Ma Paleshu Kadachana. You can never, ever, ever, ever access the result. Even if you have co completely performed this action perfectly, you still cannot know if I'm going to get that particular dis uh, result that I expected. You cannot know. Right? And you may not sometimes get it. Yeah, I, may, I may have completed this action. I may have uh, made all the right connections. I'm, I'm putting my, myself in the shoes of uh, uh, our Kurt. <laughs> okay, so he's made all the connections and all of that. Will it work or not? You'll have to wait and see. Right? You've acquired it correctly. You have read the, all the manuals and everything. You know exactly what to do. You come in here and do this. And then the result, it's not in your hands. Sometimes it is exa exactly as you expected. Sometimes it's much better than what you expected. Sometimes it is not at all what you expected. You never know. You can never ever know that. So by not focusing on the result and not getting attached to the result, you're doing yourself a huge favor because I'm concentrating on getting this work done correctly to the, to the best of my ability. That's it. Okay, I don't care what the result is. I really don't care what the result is. This is the res result that I'm expecting, but whether I get it or not, I'm not concerned with it. Now, whatever result you get, you will be able to accept it easily, right? Easy, very easy now. Because my mindset is different, that's all. Suppose I was very attached to the result, and if I did not get it, then what happens? You completely fall apart. You get stressed out, you get angry. Why me? <laughs> These kinds of questions will arise, right? 
So uh, can you grab the microphone, please? Thank you. I love this philosophy, and I'm um, I'm seeing one of the main uh, outcomes is avoiding suffering, right? Mm -hmm. um, and all the tension and everything that comes with that, and then how that disconnects you, and you know, right? right. Um, but what's coming up in my mind is is uh, like w what's popular in psychology and consciousness now is like envisioning what you want and like exactly what it's like mm -hmm. and imagining how it will feel right this is like uh -huh. what's kind of being pushed on us and we're and, and sold to us um because finally there's a way and this is the way so if you do this then you'll get it right mm -hmm. and so here is this notion of imagining what it'll feel like and what it'll be like to have it and believing that you have it and saying aloud after me like all this work mm -hmm. Where where does this ancient wisdom and this modern fad? Um, Unfortunately, it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> where do they meet, or where do they? Yeah. Do do you understand? Not, yeah, in mod in the modern world, this 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 uh, philosophy of karma yoga just doesn't exist. People are so focused on their results, and that's why so much tr stress, you know, in everybody's lives, and they get sick. And the diseases that are uh, that that are, that are there today, we never knew, you know, uh, maybe a couple of decades ago, right? Uh, maybe a, even a century ago, we never knew of these diseases. They we get in a lot of trouble because we're so focused on the result, and we don't always get it. If you get it, it's okay. If you don't get it, is when and mo a, lot, a lot of the times you don't get it, you know, because there are so many things that goes into. Uh, that action and, and the entire world has to uh, you know consent give you the consent or con or, or even conspire to make that thing happen so even if even a slight weather change is enough for you to not be able to complete your action right a change in weather suppose there's an earthquake what happens to you come on, everything comes to a standstill what can you know what to talk of, uh, of completing an action and getting the result right Suppose, uh, suppose there is uh, an accident on the highway and you're go going there for an important job. Uh, it gets the thing, you know. So what happens is the focus on the result is there. Too much of it is there. So that's why it is important to try to think about this and uh, see if I can do this, you know. That you challenge yourself and see, okay, can I do this? Can I live such a life? Can I make it better for myself? Is it possible? Okay, you need to think like that. And then if you, if you think in those terms, the answer will be a, an emphatic yes. You can do it. It is possible. And it is easy, actually, because it is so natural. We're fighting, fighting nature by trying to project these things, you know. We're fighting nature. What is natural is only the present is accessible to me. Future is not. I cannot predict the outcome. There's no way that I can predict it. So then I'm going to let it go. I'm going to drop it and I'm going to focus on this. I'll do the very best job that I can. And you know what? You will be able to. When you focus on your action, you will be able to do a really, really good job that you could never do before. If you're focused on the... See, the thing, the, the, this is the thing. There's something called multitasking, right? Is it real? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not real. <laughs> Because you cannot do two things at the same time. What they're doing is you're doing it alternately. And they're calling it multi. You're not doing two things at the same time. All right? You cannot do that. Can you play two different instruments at the same time? <laughs> it's not possible. People, people try. People try. <laughs> you can. <laughs> How about two wind instruments at the same time? Yeah, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, it's not possible. Multitasking is not possible. Uh, your mind has to be in it, you know. So you can, you may try to do two, two or three different things, but you have to toggle between the three. You cannot do them all at once simultaneously. It's not possible. So uh, you know, we perform one action. 
and we give it a hundred percent and stay there and then you can perform very well okay go ahead <laughs> okay so when you consider your your dharma or your swadharma i still don't really know the difference we can talk about that later but when you consider that like your reason for being how much of that should be influenced by some future you want to create for yourself right like this is the kind of person I want to be, and maybe that's not the person I am now, mm -hmm. but I'm going to perform my karma yoga every single day until I become this sort of person. Like, how much of I that see. should okay. be goal-oriented, goal okay. um, you know? So this uh, satis unsatisfactoriness with who I am, and then there's this uh, projection of who I want to be. I... I would recommend dropping that because the goal is to realize the self, right? And the self is not going to come from the sky and attach to yourself, right? <laughs> it is who you are already, okay? So you can have this goal of knowing yourself, knowing yourself. That, is, that, that, that can be a goal, but you don't want to become something else. Becoming, is a process of becoming, this is what gets us in trouble because I'm not happy with the way that I am. I want to become something. Then that's, that's what everybody's engaged in, isn't it? Okay. I, I think the, the distinction is, is less in the fact that like, I am a bronze statue, I wanna be a ceramic statue. Uh -huh. It is not like this, yeah. but like, okay, my, brand, my bronze could use a little polishing or some refining, or maybe this isn't exactly okay. the David that I wanna be. I understand. <laughs> That's a good question. Now I get your question. Okay. So you can improve the quality of your mind. Suppose, like I was talking about the three qualities this morning, right? So I look at my own mind and say, okay, I have, um, I have more rajas than I have sattva. Suppose I see in my mind, okay, I have more uh, rajas. How do I know? I get angry very easily. Um, and then uh, I say things which I don't mean and <laughs> get myself in a lot of trouble. That is righteous. Okay. And uh, I can't stay still. I cannot meditate because the mind is constantly going. These, if you observe these kinds of things, you can try to change that. That's okay. That is not a, a, a changing, you know, that's not changing yourself because the mind is naturally sattvic. So you're trying to reveal the sattva. So you're uh, reducing the tamas. If, you're, if I'm a lazy person, I'm, I'm very lazy that I will sit in a sofa all day long, okay? I bare minimum movement is there in me, okay? Um, I keep all the food and all the drinks and everything around me so that I don't have to get up even for that. <laughs> so when I'm hungry, I'll grab something and I will eat, but then I'll sit there. And then uh, the only thing I, I get up for is maybe if I have to use the bathroom or something, you know? If that's the life that I'm leading, then I'm, uh, my, in my mind, there's m a lot of tamoguna. So I want to get rid of that tamoguna, right? So I become more active. To get rid of tamoguna, I start um, walking more or getting out of the house and doing some physical activity. That's how you come out of the tamas. So you reduce the tamas by starting uh, uh, some activity or the other, physical activity. Okay, then, then if I imagine, uh, if I look at my own mind and see that there's more, so much activity that I'm running around all day long, okay, I'm not focusing on uh, studying at all. Like studying by, whenever I say study, I mean studying Vedanta, okay. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I look at it. So uh, studying, if I'm not studying at all, then I know that there's a lot of regis in me. Um, I'm, I'm sleepy, but I'm still working on the computer. I won't go to sleep. I'm, you know, I'm, com I'm like frantically typing away. I won't go to sleep. Then I have so much, a uh, lot of regis in me. Reduce that regis. That's all. These are okay. Okay. This way you can change. You change the quality of the mind. That's okay. All right. For the better. And then once there's enough sattva, you will know. Then that mind is conducive for gaining the knowledge of the self then you would automatically pick up a book and study or you listen to some lectures of Vedanta and you'll study. And soon, soon enough, you'd, uh, you'd know the self. You'd know who you really are. The rajas is gone, the tamas is gone. Gone means you, have, you retain a little bit of it. Like I said, depending on the time of the day, 
Uh, there's more tamas at, at night when you're getting ready to go to sleep. At that time, if you try to study, it may not work. You know, that's why I, try and I don't try to study in the evenings. I only do it in the morning when I'm really fresh. I do a, a, a shower in the morning. My goodness, it, just, it does amazing things. You, and if you get up early in the morning, so some of you are nodding, I'm, I'm sure you're practicing it. <laughs> yeah, take a cool shower. It shouldn't be too warm. The water shouldn't be very hot that you start to sweat and all that. That would be a tamasic bath. Even in the bath, there's tamasic bath, rajasic bath, and sattvic bath, you know. So a sattvic bath would be uh, a, a cool shower, uh, just the right temperature. It stimulates all the vagus nerves and all that. And then when you come out, you, you feel fresh. Your mind is very fresh. You can, if at that time, if you do your prayer, your pranayama, your puja, whatever, you know, or, or even pick up a book and, uh, and, you know, and listen to some uh, shravanam, shravanam of the scriptures, it will work wonders in your lives. You, you know, you'll see the, you make yourself making so much progress. Okay? Those changes are okay. Those are great. Okay? <coughs> Then one other thing I wanted to mention is these four uh, sentences I said in this verse, they can be seen as sutras. Okay, what is a sutra? The sutra has very few, it will have very few words. Sutra is an aphorism. So it will have very few words. It will not have very many words at all. But that doesn't mean uh, that it, it, doesn't have any, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, it's not that just because it has few words, um, it's, it's not that there's no meaning in it. It will have very deep meaning in it and you can uh, take one sutra and talk about it for hours that's how much meaning is uh, built into it and you can see it as you read it you will be inspired by it so that is another quality of a sutra and uh, and uh, the message is very clear there's no way of making any mistake when you read a sutra that's then then that this is another quality uh, quali you know for it to be called a sutra these are the qualifications okay and then so every point is made very clear and the meaning would be extremely profound so that uh, so when you look at this uh, verse the four parts they satisfy all of these conditions so they therefore they're called chatusutri four sutras okay four aphorisms yeah, this is the vision of Sri Krishna. Amazing vision. Okay, so we, have, we are seeing the second one, which is Ma Phaleshu Kadachana. Never, ever, ever focus on the result of the action. While you're performing the action, do not keep your focus on the action. Well, if a basketball player is uh, making a, taking a shot, if he focuses on having made the shot, and if he's uh, listening to all these people, you know, uproaring, you know, uproar from the audience, right? When he makes the shot, if he's focused on that, he'll never make the shot. He should just focus on making the shot. That's it. He looks at the ring and that's it. So, <coughs> in the uh, Mahabharata, there's a story. Um, Arjuna and the other brothers, I don't know if you've been talking about that. Uh, that's one of the themes for this week. So, Arjuna and his brothers, they were uh, learning archery from their guru, Dronacharya. Okay, so Arjuna was asked to look at a, a, a metal, uh, I mean, it was like a wooden bird. Okay, it was kept on, the bra on a branch of a tree, a wooden bird. Uh, and then the teacher said, you need to, uh, m you know, strike your arrow at the eye of that bird. Okay, and so each, each one came and then uh, they were asked, what do you see? And they all answered. I'm going to just focus on Arjuna's answers. So Arjuna came and he, uh, he aimed at it. He hadn't uh, left, the, you know, he hadn't uh, pulled the thing. So the arrow was, uh, was not released yet. He was looking at it. He was focusing, uh, you know, at the target. And Dronacharya asked him, what do you see? Do you see the tree? He said, no. Do you see the branch? He said, no. Do you see the leaves in the branch? He said, no. Do you see the bird? He said, no. Do you see the eye? He said, yes. That's the focus I'm talking about. So he was focused only, he doesn't see anything else. He just sees the eye. That's what it takes, you know? So you focus on your action and that's it. Nothing else, nothing around it. No distractions. 
And, okay. So if Arjuna were to say, uh, suppose, and they, they also have these games where uh, when they, uh, they some such a uh, test will be given. So you have to shoot uh, the eye of a fish, which is rotating like this. So Arjuna did that once. So uh, the contest is, uh, this ro the, there's a wheel and there's a wooden fish with an eye and then it would be rotating like this. So he has to take his bow and arrow and shoot the eye while it is in motion. It's very difficult to do, but uh, if anybody can do it, it would be Arjuna, right? So he would then, the, the kings would, uh, mm, uh, you know, make a, an announcement of such a contest. So kings from, uh, princes will come from all the d different kingdoms. They'll all assemble there and they would all take a shot at it. Right, and then the prize is they get to marry the princess. That's the prize, <laughs> you know. So uh, the princess is so beautiful and so uh, whatever that uh, only such a person who can accomplish that task deserves to marry her. That's the idea. Okay, so Arjuna would be able to do that. Suppose Arjuna thought about the princess while he's shooting, <laughs> he will never be able to do it. Right? You have to focus. He focuses. He knew how to do that. He is a great archer. Okay, so that's the kind of focus it takes to be able to perform an action perfectly. Okay, so this word, we use the word perfect, right? How many of us hit it? You know, we should look at ourselves and say, how many, how many times have I hit this perfection? I'm, my aim is that perfection, you know? <laughs> so it can be accomplished only if you are in the present moment and you're concentrating on the, the job at hand and not at the pala. Never ever, because focusing on that will, will affect your karma in the present moment, right? Then why do you want to do it, <coughs> right?